Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate and plot the absorption spectrum of a molecule using the real-time time-dependent density functional theory or RTTDDFT implementation within the Ripper module of Turbo Mode. Now RTTDDFT allows one to evolve the electron density in time under the influence of an external electric field. And in order to calculate the absorption spectrum, we only need to use a very weak electric field in order to perturb the electrons. Now with Ripper, we can do that using a Gaussian pulse um, to perturb the electron density. And as an example for this tutorial, we will be using the water molecule that you can see over here. And I have the atomic coordinates of this water molecule as an XYZ file over here. Now, in order to perform our calculation using Ripper, we need to convert this into the Turbo Mold Quad format. So just go ahead and copy these, uh, this XYZ file and head over to this website that is rippertools.turbomold.org, which is a web app that I have created to facilitate a lot of, um, you know, uh, operations that are needed for running and post-processing calculations with Ripper. So here we'll head over to the convert other formats to Ripper and select the input file format to XYZ, paste our XYZ file over here and get the coad file over here. So just go ahead and copy all of this. Now head over to your terminal as we'll be running these calculations using terminal. And also I'd like to mention that if you don't know how to run turbo mold calculations with terminal or you're not very familiar with um, these calculations, I would recommend that you watch my first tutorial on TurboMole and you will um, find a link to it either in the description or you can just go over to my channel and find a playlist um, that is uh, called TurboMole for Beginners. So anyway, so here I, ha I am in my TurboMole tutorial directory and I'll just go ahead and create another directory called RTTDDFT within this. So RTTDDFT and then I'll move into this directory and I'll create another directory called H2O and then I'll change into that directory as well. And now I'll create a file called coad and paste the, um, you know, the coad file that we just converted from the XYZ by using control plus V and then press control plus O to save it, hit enter and control plus X to exit. Now I have this quad file in my directory. Now I'll just go ahead and run define as usual. And um, I'll type in a space quad. And now you will see that it says Cartesian coordinates for three atoms have been successfully added. Then I'll press asterisk to go to the next menu, no. Then b all dev to svp, sorry, um, dev to svp. Then we can check if the basis sets were assigned correctly or not, and indeed they were. Then hit enter again. Then asterisk to move to the next menu. Then we will assign an initial guess using EHT. Then space, then press Y. Then zero for the molecular charge. Y to accept the configuration. Then we will um, go into the DFT submenu, turn it on then assign a functional let's say pbe for this example and then go to go back to the previous menu by pressing asterisk and hitting enter then again we will move into the ri sub menu turn it on and then assign the auxiliary basis set to the universal basis set and then check if it was assigned correctly or not and indeed it was so again we will press asterisk hit enter to exit this menu once again and then finally once again to just exit define now let's check out our control file that we just created so here okay we have the def 2 svp basis set we have the functional pbe and we also have the rij approximation turned on and the auxiliary basis set is universal so everything seems okay now the important part for the rtdddft calculation as i already mentioned we need to apply a weak electric field with uh, Ripper, we can do this using a Gaussian pulse. So again, we will head over to this web application and find the menu or the sub menu called RTTDDFT input creator. So just go ahead and click on it.
and here it is so here um, you can basically uh, you know specify the various parameters for this um, you know RTDDFT input so the first parameter that you need to specify is for are for the electric field so you can specify the electric field type which we need to be Gaussian which is by default there so it is defined using this mathematical formula and as I mentioned that it has to be really weak so therefore the amplitude is really small so in atomic units it's just 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 and also we are perturbing um, so by default the perturbation is along both uh, or along all the x y and z directions which is good and then the peak position is um, you know right in the beginning at just three atomic units and peak width so you can leave all of these to the defaults these are pretty good for the absorption spectrum calculations although in some cases you may need to increase the amplitude by just a bit but for most of the cases these defaults will work pretty fine so now what you can do is you can just go ahead and copy this portion for your control file go to your control file and let's come below our IJ and just paste it so this contains all our electric field information for our RTDDFT simulation but we also need to tell Ripper that we want to perform RTDDFT so for that we have a lot of options over here and once again for you know an absorption spectrum calculation most of these um, work well at their default values however um, for this um, particular tutorial I will just go through them really briefly so the first uh, here is that do we want this RT spec file or not which contains our absorption spectrum and this that is the whole point of tutorials so of course we want that file then we can also choose to print the energy at each of the time steps so as i mentioned that the electron density is evolved in time and this is done numerically so you have your um, so the electron density is evaluated or evolved at various time steps so and at each of those time steps you will have some energy so this option tells ripper if you want to print the energies at each time step or not similarly you can print the dipole moment at each time step and you can also print the density at each time step however for this tutorial we'll turn it off as it requires a lot of disk sorry disk space and next um, we'll use uh, so Ripper uses the Magnus operator for the time evolution and the second order expansion is 99% in 99% of the cases good enough so we'll just leave it to 2 then you can either choose to use the SCF procedure for time integration or the predictive vector scheme now in order to find out more details about this you should refer to our paper on this implementation um, that you can see right now on your screen and the link to it is in the description down below and for this tutorial let's just go ahead and choose the SCF scheme and um, the evolution time 1000 atomic units corresponds to around 24 femtoseconds which is pretty good then the time step actually we can use a pretty large time step so let's change it to uh, let's say 0.5 atomic units and then the print step so print step means that in these RT energy and RT dipole files at uh, you know at which interval are these energies and dipole moments being printed and I would recommend that you always keep the print step to one because then you get the information at each time step so you're not missing out or losing any information then this minimum energy maximum energy and the energy step this is for your absorption spectrum plot so your absorption spectrum plot will start from the uh, you know the x-axis would start from the zero energy in atomic units then the and the maximum limit would be 0.75 atomic units of energy and the steps um, in at which these is these are plotted or calculated would be 0.001 atomic units so it will be a really smooth plot and this stamping factor is again uh, something related to the RTDDFT implementation that you will find in our paper. But the default value should probably, you will never need to change it. So, okay, so now what you can just go ahead and do is you can copy all this stuff for your RTDDFT calculation and come back to your control file and paste it right below the electric field information and just go ahead and save your control file. And then exit and now you can see that you have all these files in your directory and now you can just 
you know, specify the number of threads that you want to use for your calculation. So let's say we want to use 32 threads and or cores. And now just uh, let's go in and run this calculation by typing in uh, Ripper SMP and drive directly out to uh, an, a file called output. And the ampersand actually means that the calculation should run in background. And you can also add uh, a, a term called no HUP, which means that even if you exit your terminal, the calculation will still be running in the background. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Now, if I look at the contents of my directory, we see that we have the usual ripper files, which is okay. We also have the output file, so let's go ahead and check that out. So here we see that the SCF has converged in seven cycles, and it has also calculated the electric dipole moment at the zero time step. That will be your intrinsic dipole moment of the molecule. However, the calculation hasn't ended. So what's going on is that if you look at the RT depot, RT spec and the RT energy file, so let's go ahead and open them. So RT energy file, for example, so it contains the energies at each time step. So we are running the calculation for 1000 atomic units with a time step of 0.5 atomic units, which means we will have 2000 time steps of information. So here we see that um, the first column is for time step, the second column for total energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. And what you should do is when your simulation is running, so for now this was a really small simulation as I used a really small basis set that is that through SVP. So the simulation already ended, but for a really long simulation, what you can do is you can keep on opening this RT energy file and see at which, uh, you know, at how, mu how much progress have your simulations made. So for now, we have pretty much completed the calculation as we are all, we have already reached 2000 um, time steps. And the second important thing that you can do by opening this file is you can monitor the energy. Now, during your simulations for absorption spectrum calculations, the energies should somewhat stay in the same uh, range. They should not deviate too much. If they do, then that means that something is going wrong with your simulation. So that is another thing that you can do. And similarly, um, you can open the RT depot file, which again contains the dipole moment. And actually it is the time dependent induced dipole moment, not just the dipole moment. Again, you can get more details in the paper uh, that I have linked below. And yeah, so the first column is again for time step. The second column is for X axis. Um, so the X component, Y component, and the Z component of the uh, dipole moment. Now, let's also just go ahead and open the output file and see that actually the simulation ended in just 26 seconds. So that was pretty quick. And also now let's go ahead and check out the RT spec file that contains the absorption spectrum that we have just calculated. So this is the RT spec file. And essentially, the first column contains the energy values in electron volts, and the um, second column contains the intensities of the excitation. So now, once again, come back to the Ripper Tools web app and go to this option, that is RTDDDFT Absorption Spectrum Calculator, and come back to your RT spec file and copy all the contents of this file. And... Uh, Okay, and press Control C to copy it, and then come here, press Control V to paste it, and click anywhere outside this box. And now you can see that this web app will very neatly plot your absorption spectrum. And there are a lot of uh, options to customize your plots as well. So first of all, it is normalizing the plot. Um, by default, you can turn it off, and then you can set some you know, ranges for the X and Y axis. So let's just do it 0 to 15 and for the X axis and 0 to the default for the Y axis. And yeah, so now it looks much neater. And you can also choose a different color for your plot. And um, what else can you do? So you can also um, choose a different plotting style. So one of my favorite plotting style is to use um, dash dot, I would say, or dot it. 
and sorry, actually that was the line style. Sorry, sorry. So I made a mistake. So one of my favorite plotting styles is actually solid. And then in the plot style, you can use shaded plus outline. So this is what I was talking about. So this is one of my favorite plotting styles. Maybe a different color would be better for this. So let's pick this color. And this actually looks really nice to me usually. And you can also change the line width and um, you can change the labels for the x-axis, y-axis, as well as the title of the plot. And yeah, so this is, these are all the kind of things that you can do. And also this plot is actually transparent. So this background, once you download this file as a PNG file, this plot as a PNG file, uh, you don't really get a background if this option is on. So yeah, so that is basically it. So pretty much that is how you perform an RTD-DDFT calculation for the purpose of um, calculating and plotting the absorption spectrum of a molecule. And uh, yeah, so this web app actually is really helpful in order to, you know, first of all, create the input because as you saw that the input for the control file is actually quite a lot. So all this input corresponds to the absorption spectrum calculation using RTDDFT. And remembering all of this is not really easy. You cannot set it using define either. So that is why this web app is really helpful to construct this input. And then the web app is again helpful to plot the absorption spectrum actually. So yeah, so that is it. I hope you guys really found this uh, tutorial useful and enjoyed it. In case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or doubts, you can leave them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching and have a great day.